Hey guys, Scott from Aristocob.com here. And Seth from the ShrinkingPastor.com. Together, the three of us. I started with them this time. Oh. We're Markwood Men's Breakfast Club. Hey, welcome. Good morning. And uh, we're, we're in a special location today, and that's because our schedules, as usual, have messed us up a little bit. So we're on Boy's Back <clears throat> Porch. Yeah. We had hoped to let you see the beautiful lake that's back here, but uh, when we did that, it turned out the camera turned us into silhouettes, and there, wasn't, there wouldn't have been much of the lake to see anyway. Yeah. Anyway, um, good morning. I am smoking the uh, wonderful Fruit Loopy German tobacco that I got some more of from a, a buddy from Germany. This is uh, Tobacco Ladle Our Own Number no. Six, and I confirmed they make this um, at at that tobacconist. And I'm sure they're buying a bunch of different tobaccos that they you know from various manufacturers that sure. they blend together. But that explains why the cuts are all so mm -hmm. different and the, the, uh, all the different components of this. Mm. It's really good stuff. Loop tobacco? This is the Fruit Loop tobacco. Yeah, I like that stuff. We got a couple tins. Well, I got about Don't a tin. The table. I got about a tin and a half. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, and I'm smoking that and I can finally show for the first time my Mark Twain. I've had this pipe since uh, July of last year. When uh, Jandy and I visited the factory, and um, this was which factory? Missouri Meerschaum factory. Mm -hmm. This was gifted to me along with a couple other things, and uh, I haven't been able to show this. I have one Instagram picture of me doing this, but that's it. And uh, this is a, a pipe that's coming soon, and uh, details are are forthcoming, but not as forthcoming as I'd like. And, and, I, and I said uh, in a conversation today that I would uh, mention this to uh, that uh, Dave Barnes, this is for you. It's awfully sweet. Yeah, it is, it is kind of sweet. <laughs> Last time you guys saw us, if you watched, uh, Saturday we were in Chicago. Gosh. No, not the last time. A week and a half ago. I get so messed up with filming <laughs> out of order. But the last time we filmed was in Chicago, and that was That's a right. lot of fun. And uh, I think we're going to talk about that some more at length um, next week, some of that. But today, uh, I'm vaping. And I've talked about vaping. Um, I was excited to see many of the uh, pipe smokers up in Chicago were vaping. They mm -hmm. had not only just the tiny stick mods, but um, box mods, bigger mods. And, uh, and if you have questions about vaping, I would love to answer them for you. But... Um, Today we want to talk to you about something that uh, it has, it's been causing me stress. It's been causing me a lot of stress. Uh, on our drive up to Chicago, um, Dad and I spent some time doing some research because there's some stuff going on that uh, is a little unnerving and sketchy. a little sketchy and it also seems to be, some of it seems to be flying kind of under the radar and so we want to share it with you. We don't have all of the answers or even many of the answers, but what we do have is a little bit of knowledge. We've been reading up as much as we can and um, want to share th that with you and also give you the resources that we have. So for next week... Well, I was going to say, before go you click away, um, the fact that Boy mentioned that he's got his e-cig and some of what we're going to talk about here seems to be talking about e-cigs um, au contraire, uh, we believe that the camel's nose is sticking under the tent, and uh, what we're about to talk about is going to affect all of us that use any form of a tobacco product. All right, so what are we talking about, boy? Um, <clears throat> April 25th, the Food and Drug Administration announced the deeming of tobacco products. Um, now, the largest... Uh, area affected is electronic cigarettes um, because they're the newest and so there's no history really um, of e-cigs and so the FDA has said well we we're going to be putting all of these stop gaps in place to really slow the growth of the e-cig market and we really want to test and make sure that they are what um, the e-cig evangelists say that they are and, and, and they do this by claiming, or deeming as they call it, that these products are under their jurisdiction or under their control. So at the and moment, how do they do that? At the moment, those things are not under their control, but they believe they should be. And they don't have to go to anybody to ask for permission to do that. They just 
deem it so, and it becomes such. Yeah, um, in 2010, our Congress thought it wise to give them this authority, and they haven't used it yet. Um, so right now, as of, as of today, um, the FDA has under their jurisdiction cigarettes, um, cigarette, let me say, cigarette tobacco, and... It's like roll your own tobacco, for mm-hmm. example. Yeah, and there's one other thing, one other thing relating to cigarettes that's currently deemed... Oh, by the way, some of the stuff that we've been going through, this is one packet from the FDA. Here's the other federal register. So we've been trying to sift through this best we can. Um, but yeah, right now, it's only related to cigarettes. Those are the only things that fall under their, their jurisdiction. And in 2000, 2010, the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act granted the FDA the permission to pull items that they saw fit under their their umbrella, um, under their authority. And so this is the first time that they've done this relating to tobacco products. Now, what is a tobacco product? You'd think a tobacco product is something made from tobacco. Hmm. Turns out it's not that simple. Boy, what what all, just from, from your, your current knowledge, what all is a tobacco product? I would say. Well, <laughs> as, as now soon to be deemed by the Food and Drug Administration. So this is what the this is what the FDA says in their deeming proposal. Now this is a proposal, but we'll talk about that in a minute. They say they define a tobacco product. No, this this deeming will apply to all tobacco products except accessories of a proposed deemed tobacco product to be subject to the def- FDA's tobacco product authorities. Oh, okay. so an accessory. Right. A pipe's an accessory. Right. And so uh, FDA considers accessories products to be those items that are not included as part of a finished tobacco product. Huh. Or, or expected to be used by consumers in the consumption of a tobacco product. What? So, so an accessory is something that's not tobacco and that's not being used in the consumption of the tobacco. So accessories... So, so clearly pipe racks, cigar humidors... They list here hookah tongs, bags, cases, burners, holders, cigar cutters, those humidors. Are, those are accessories not under the control, not a tobacco product. Well, that makes sense, right? The Tobacco Control Act defines the term tobacco product to mean any product made or derived for tobacco that is intended for human consumption, including any component, part, or accessory of a tobacco product, except for raw materials other than tobacco used in manufacturing a component, part, or accessory. Products that meet the statutory definition of tobacco product can include currently marketed products such as dissolvables, gels, hookah tobacco, electronic cigarettes, cigars, and pipe tobacco. Components and parts of tobacco products would also be included in the scope of this proposed rule. Components include as part of a finished tobacco product are, sorry, Components and parts are included as part of a finished tobacco product or are intended for consumer use and the consumption of a tobacco product, including, and this is where they they list, uh, filters, tubes, papers, pouches, flavorings used for any of the tobacco products, such as hookah smokers, listen up, Um, flavored hookah charcoal, and hookah flavor enhancers. So the charcoal that you use to, to cause eat, the smoke to heat your, your, your is s- part s- of s- s- the tobacco. It is now a tobacco product. Not yet. Well, soon to be a tobacco product. So, but, but ladies and gentlemen, your pipe, while not a tobacco product, is a tobacco product a because it's, it, is, it is used in the consumption of tobacco. So, all right. So they're they're gonna they're gonna claim that they can control that. So what does that mean? 
this going to put a tax on it? Well, let me tell you. Some of these, and, and the FDA is kind enough um, to be absolutely clear that they see tobacco products to be as terrible and horrible as cigarettes, which they pretty much say are like the most terrible thing in the world. And they, in no uncertain terms, associate all tobacco products to cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And then they make claims in here about how part of the good news about this legislation, about them deeming our tobacco, is how much more expensive it's going to become. And how that's yeah. a way to get the people off of the tobacco. Yeah. So if nothing else, we're going to make this expensive. So, the act requirements that would apply to proposed deemed products include establishment registration and product listing, ingredient listing, submissions prior to the introduction of new products. That's the one that really is designed to hurt the e-cig crowd. Because what they've done is they've said, oh... Uh, you have to submit an application for your new product to be approved. Okay. And new product. New that would tobacco. Be some, that would be something product. I come out with in August of this year, right. right? Starting 2007. So anything that's been created <laughs> since 2007 is going to have to be submitted for approval. And because everything involved in the consumption of a tobacco product... Um, is tobacco. So everything from, for e-cigars, this is the battery, this is your canthal if you build your own coil, this is your pro tank, your evod, it's your juice, it's your drip tip. Your, your, your tip. Everything is going to be subject to this. So one of the big concerns within the e-cig community is if I produce a juice that I sell, um, every time I alter that juice, if I want to have a banana flavored juice, and then I also want to have a graham cracker flavored juice, that's two submissions. And each of those submissions costs money. And each of those submissions costs time. So one of the big concerns is um, the e-cig, everything that's ever been created practically as far as electronic cigarettes go, are going to have to be resubmitted for or, approval. Or, or submitted. submitted. Yeah, submitted for approval. So there's likely, you're taking, what, eight years, seven years worth of stuff, there's going to be a backlog. So the new stuff that's being submitted and created right now, the newer and better things, probably we're not going to get to see those for years until the backlog's taken care of, if, if they get approval at all. Let me continue. Labeling requirements. Um, labeling requirements is another restriction. Now, now with this, I think about corn cob pipes, right? Because again, this will now be a tobacco product. So, it, it as as deemed could require Missouri Mirisham to have to do all the things that Seth is talking about. So everything here's why I say I think that most of us who ha, who are not e-cig people by and large have figured, eh, it's just those kids and those vapor things it doesn't affect me it affects us it affects us all continue yeah so if you want to um if you want to make a new pipe like the mark twain you might have to get approval and submit approval for that because it's something new and something different so there's going to be a year two year i don't know process with the FDA, thousands of dollars spent to get a new pipe put on the market. What is that going to do to small business owners, independent carvers? What is that going to do to, you know, I mean, we saw some incredible unique carvings at the show. Some people doing just some weird, funky stuff. Are they going to have to submit their items for approval? Are they going to have to pay these, these same taxes according to what we're reading? Yes. So... It says, among other effects, new products would be subject to evaluation to ensure that they are appropriate for public health before they could be marketed, labeled, labeling could not contain misleading statements, and FDA would be made aware 
of the ingredients in proposed deemed tobacco products. This one also affects e-cig people because e-cigs, by all tests, have shown at worst, the, the worst of the worst, nastiest, you know, cheapest knockoff stuff that you can get has shown about 20 carcinogens compared to the over 2,000 contained in cigarettes. And what they're saying is it would be illegal for an e-cig vendor to make a claim that an e-cig, this, is safer. is safer, better, less cancer-causing for you than your cancer stick. They can't say it. No, 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 wait. It did go on. We read a whole other part that talked about they, they, if they want to make any health claims... Those would have to be clinically trialed by, by, the, the, FDA. by the FDA. Right. So the <laughs> FDA is going to have to be, they're going to be the ones that will decide what can and can't be said about the products. This is, this here, I started this. This says, the deeming provision would impose immediate costs because manufacturers and importers of newly regulated tobacco products, which is going to be all of them, would have to comply with registration, submission, and labeling requirements, and would have to comply with the warning label provisions, which would impose additional costs, including costs for signs with warnings at point of sale for cigars sold uh, without packaging, there would also be potential costs for removing non-compliant point-of-sale advertising and complying with vending machine restrictions. The other thing is they are going to put strict uh, requirements that, that all of these things can be sold to under 18 only, or over 18 only, which I think everyone is in agreement that that's, that's wise. But one of the things they want to impose is a required credit card verification to to make that happen. So it means that people with small businesses that build their own websites are going to have to pay some third party to have to have age verification via credit cards. For everybody yeah. to visit, visit no, the site. No kid has ever used his parents' charge card. That's right. Ever. <laughs> uh, pipe, pipe peeps. Here's another piece that affects us. Free samples of pro proposed deemed tobacco products would also be prohibited. You ever gone into a pipe shop, filled up your pipe? Can't do that. You ever won a corn cob from a contest at aristocob.com? Can't do that. Can't do that. The cost imposed would be borne primarily by manufacturers and importers. Some of the costs will be passed on to consumers in the form of higher prices. Really? In addition to the costs described above, the proposed rule would lead to private costs in the form of reduced revenues for firms in affected sectors. In other words, we're either going to hit them with, with fees or we're, it, it's, it's going to cost them... I'm sorry, my brain just emptied. <laughs> The delays are going to cost them. I mean, they're, they're proud of this. That's what's amazing I, I, about I wanna, this whole thing. I want to point out. I just want to point out. So I we printed. I printed all of this off. I have been working through this on a PDF. Um, this is not the PDF, so I don't have this fully annotated. My, my PDF is crazy annotated. So all of this documentation so far, I've read from five pages. There's, there's this much of this junk left. Five pages. And, and the for, first, the first four pages of this one document, and this is page two of the other document. I'm pissed. I'm, I'm upset. I and, apologize. And in Chicago, I talked to a few people from the industry and, and asked them, just sort of, um, Seth and I had already been talking about this in the car on the way to Chicago, and so we, we were already starting to establish our understanding of this. And so I'm asking some of these guys that are in the business, so how do you think this affects you? Most of them know nothing about it. Oh, you mean what that the e-cig thing? E thing? Yeah, so they're, they're also deeming cigars 
And the only provisions that they have made, um, the only kind of special wording in here is they have a proposed second option applying specifically to cigars premium. and to Pre premium, premium cigars. cigars. So they they will restrict the proposal is to cause less pain on premium cigar users since the over, since, since the odds are young new first time smokers are probably not going to spend the money on a premium cigar so that's the theory but even that they're saying what are your opinions on this yeah the the whole a large crux of the argument that they make over and over and over again in the document is that this is all about keeping keeping the youths from smoking um, and keeping the youths that some they think they think in their head that <laughs> that teenagers are going to decide to go from vaping my flavor today is shortcake strawberry shortcake and it is delicious to cigarette smoking at five bucks a pack they, they they believe that the that what's happening is the youth are being lured into cigarettes through e-cigs e as opposed to the opposite of what what most of us seem to, to believe and, and one of the big discussions in here has to do with flavorings and they're saying, "Oh yeah, adults don't like flavors. Adults, the, fla the flavors are just to lure the just, children. Just in. for kids. So you don't actually you don't like that. No, I, I hate it. Um, being an aromatic smoker, I clearly don't like the taste of vanilla or chocolate or rum or any of those flavors. Cotton candy, cinnamon. Well, I'm talking about tobacco. There's very few cotton candy, yeah. cinnamon flavored tobacco. Yeah. Although I do have a, I have a cinnamon roll. Yeah, we we got tobacco. a few a few pages in, and they were talking about the flavorings and the tobaccos as well." And that they're they're going to study to see if those are um, if those are just being used to lure in the young smokers. So, I, I think we have to come to a call to action at this point. We have more studying to do. You have some studying to do. You need to catch up on this and become aware. One of the things the Food and Drug Administration is doing is they're saying that that we're in a comment period. So we can comment on certain things about this. Um, I guess in theory they, they want our opinion before they do what they've, what they've already written about. They're going to do it, guys, whether we comment on it to them or not. So my advice to us is, number one, yeah, we should comment. We should tell them, hold on, I like flavored e-cigs. I like flavored pipe tobaccos, too. What was that? There was that advertisement we saw. Wasn't the FDA? It was um, oh the uh, Center for Disease Control, the CDC. They were looking for oh my gosh oh we're we're looking for Asian people primarily oh, yeah. who used to smoke cigarettes and then switched to e-cigs because they thought it was safer, but then developed some disease. Yeah, the the, the three criteria they're looking for people basically that have a history of smoking. Switch to e-cigs and are now dying. Right, and they want they they want to talk to those people, <laughs> not the people that were sick, switched, and are now healthy or any other situation. They want to find the people that have had. They're looking for causation when there isn't necessarily any. They want to be able to say, "Oh, the e-cigs caused the thing." Because the other thing that the FTC has said that they're they're concerned about is people switching from cigarettes to e-cigs or pipes or cigars and thinking that it's a healthier or less damaging alternative. And so they're drawing the conclusions already that it's not. There was one so, point... So, so now they want evidence to support That's right, their, their conclusions. conclusions. At one point, we were in the car, and on one page, they were saying that this, this document here says... We really we need to deem these. We need to, to take electronic cigarettes under our control because we really don't know what's in them, and we really can't say if they are or are not um, as healthy as or as harmful as cigarettes. And then the next page, they're talking about how dangerous they are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, the point I, I want uh, the point I want to make is, guys, it's important for us number one to be informed. 
Number two, let's go ahead and jump through the FDA's hoop and give our comments. And, and we need to be careful that, that we're not obnoxious, um, that we're not yelling about our rights being taken away. But let's talk like reasonable adults who enjoy these products, who use them with the full knowledge of, of risk that we may be taken, taking. And for those of you who have given up cigarettes for the pipe or cigarettes for e-cig or have tapered your consumption of those, talk about that. Talk about how, as an adult, you like these flavors too. Um, but I would also say it's important for us to communicate with our lawmakers um, because it, it, it's funny. If I were to say, well, I'm going to make up a rule, I'm going to make up a, a, a new law, and if you have an opinion of it, just go ahead and send that to me. Don't talk to anybody else about it. No, screw that. Talk to your lawmakers. Talk to your Congress people. Talk to, go to your city council. Get them up in arms because, you know, you're supporting local businesses with your e-cig and tobacco and other other products. Missouri Meerschaum, 50-some employees. Company's been around since the 1800s, and uh, this is going to affect them. Someone's going to say, oh, no, 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 this is about e-cigs. You're reading too much into this. Are we really reading too much into this? No, I believe it's in here for a reason, and that reason is because uh, eventually they're going to come after all of it. Um, I'm also continuing to stockpile my pipe tobacco, and, uh, you know, you might lose yours. I'm not losing mine. Yeah, that's, that's actually, you know, talking about calls to action. The initial response among a lot in the vaping community is, well, I guess I better go and buy a lot of batteries and a lot of e-juice and nothing more. And, and you know, yeah, you absolutely should go buy some pipes, buy some tobacco. You, It would be, I don't know, silly not to do that knowing this. But that can't be all that you do. You know, one of the things that really... We read this, we were reading this on our way up to um, to Chicago, and we didn't talk to too many people about it because we hadn't really read up fully. We, we weren't as educated as we wanted to be. And all around, there were groups, there were events, there were things going on, really celebrating the legacy of pipe smoking, really celebrating... Um, just the joy that we have as pipe smokers, the father-son camaraderie, um, you know, pipe smoking in the movies. There was an event, and the whole time I was thinking, this is wonderful, and... <laughs> and it's, in, it's it, in the bullseye. Yeah, and we need to do whatever we can to preserve it, um, now more than ever, I think. Um, but that said, we don't have all the answers, and we know that there are people smarter than us, so what we are doing is we wanted to bring it to you, give you some resources to learn on your own. Um, MarkwoodmensBreakfastClub.com or MMBClub.com this time next week, we'll, at least by this time next week, we'll have every resource that we've found available. Cur currently those URLs lead you to our YouTube channel. No, right now well, to, it leads to, a, to the live to, stream. To, to a page that has some links. Picture. Uh, we're going to use that as our our uh, repository, yeah, or suppository. Nope, <laughs> no butt stuff. Well, cigarette smokers. No, uh, good point. Um, and we're we're going to put links there. The other thing I would recommend, um, even for those of you that have no interest in vaping, have never vaped a day in your life, get involved, sign up, register with uh, C A S A A. It stands for the Consumer Advocates for Smoke-Free Alternatives, they are really spearheading the campaign against this. On behalf of the e crowd, because again, right now, it seems like they're the only ones that have taken notice. And so they have lawyers, they have, they're putting out documents. Lobbyists. Uh, yeah, they've, they're putting out stuff about um, some of the ridiculous things that are in here as they comb through it with their people that are much smarter than us. Look them up. I know there are other places, but um, can you know. can you tell we're excited, <laughs> and passionate about this? Yeah. Um, so again, get educated, 
don't go off uh, half cocked here. And uh, but but at the same time, on your channels, get on there and repeat this message if you would. Um, wake people up and and make folks that watch you understand that hey, uh, this is something that we should all be concerned about. It's, Read up again, on it. Like I said, it, it takes you two pages. You get two pages into it, and you probably will be furious if you're reading it the way that, that I have been. Um, and and so, you know, that's the, the other thing I would recommend. Educate yourself first, best that you can, and then pass it on. Um, because we want to make sure, that which is what we have tried to do. We don't want to pass on anything that's going to get someone riled up and not turn out to not be true. Yeah. All right. So, uh, we've gone long here. We appreciate your time and attention, and um, we, we look forward to working together with you to uh, at least raise awareness of this and see what we can do to, uh, to make sure that these products remain legal and available and affordable. And uh... Next week, back in the shop, a lot more fun. I promise. <laughs> you guys have a great day. Make it a great day, guys.